that's all you have to what you can do is go identify whatever the purple arrow is. <coughs> Talked about this last time. Identify the green, blue, red. Right, the color is like kind of when I grade it, I could you know, you know, decode it. Just put what they're pointing to. Take a minute to do that. Get some from the work room. I'll be right back when you do.
sorry for the delay. We will review this at the end of class today. But this is the histology. And um, to make your own track, what did you put for the red arrow? Yeah, that is correct. We're going to move from histology to physiology. Um, I would like students to know how the hypothalamus controls the pituitary. I have a little cartoon emojis there. Um, it used to be thought that pituitary controlled all of the uh, endocrine, endocrine glands, hence the master gland. It turns out the hypothalamus controls it. So I'm teaching that. It's the true master. What we're looking at here is the hypothalamus above the pituitary, and they illustrate the cells that kind of reach down and control the posterior pituitary. So we'll talk about them separately, anterior, posterior. They're controlled in different ways. The anterior pituitary is controlled by regulatory hormones, but the posterior pituitary, it's a direct neural connection. hypothalamic control of the posterior pituitary. I'll describe it as a direct neural connection. So let's remember that anterior posterior, in your notes I should have, I, I drew this kind of upgrowth and this downgrowth, which became anterior posterior pituitaries. The anterior pituitary is an epithelial tissue. However, the posterior pituitary is neural tissue. Think of it as a little extension of the brain. So that way the cells from the hypothalamus they're able to extend their long axons all the way down and use the posterior pituitary as a launching pad to secrete their hormones. And so this is kind of how you need to retrain your brain. In 430, we taught you that neurons secrete neurotransmitters. But here, we're seeing neurons can synthesize and secrete hormones. Okay, and there's two we're talking about here, ADH and oxytocin. Okay. It might help to draw this out. Oh, this is from hey, I drew it from the first class. I should do my job and do it for you from the start. So you know how we got there. As you draw things, you're making connections. You're giving yourself a mental map of the material. So we're, we're doing it together in class, but you should do it yourself when you study. So that was um, illustrating the uh, hypothalamus. So what we got here, I'm going to give you some guidelines here. And between my dotted lines, that's kind of the pituitary stock or the infundibulum. And so below it is pituitary, I'll just put pit. And when we have anterior and we have posterior, and above the infundibulum is the area of the hypothalamus. So I'll just put HYP. 
This here is where you cut cranial nerve two, where they cross. That's the optic chiasm, a little landmark. Optic chiasm. Okay, now that's pretty much a good um, map of this figure here. And so we gotta learn how the hypothalamus kind of uh, reaches down and controls the posterior pituitary. <coughs> Now the hormone ADH, that was synthesized by cells right above the optic chiasm. So I'll draw one cell here. A cluster of cells in neurobiology, they, they call them nuclei. So this nucleus of cells, right above the supraoptic chiasm, that I call it green, is the supraoptic nucleus. They secrete, in, well they synthesize, then secrete the hormone ADH, vasopressin, talked about it yesterday. So notice that the cell body is in the hypothalamus. The axon extension, it's like an extension cord, this is just gonna basically extend down the infundibulum. <clears throat> use the same color to green. And secrete ADH from the posterior pituitary. Okay. So no supraoptic nucleus. Also know another one called paraventricular nucleus. I'll color it the cell blue. They synthesize secrete oxytocin. I'll tell you the physiology of that later. Okay, so it's basically going to be located above here. There's the cell. It's neuron, it's gonna have its axon extend all the way down here. To be introduced into the bloodstream, an arterial blood supplies comes in this way. Bit. I'll draw it half red, half blue to symbolize gas exchange. But, um, well, that's how the hormones get swept up into the bloodstream. Blood coming in, oxygen rich, get the gas exchange, and the vein will collect the blood along with the hormones. Blood coming out. Uh, you got your, your ADH and your oxytocin leaving with the bloodstream. So it's a direct neural connection. That tract of axons that goes from hypothalamus down to pituitary right here has a name. It's called the hypothalamic. Hypothecial tract. Big long term, but it makes sense, right? Hypothalamus, hypothesis. Um, attract, uh, that tract is a tract of axons. Okay. So any questions on that? that that's the control. Okay. It, it's pretty much a direct shot. You just make the hormones up here and you just release them here. Yeah? What is the blue? You got the red and then the blue together. I didn't both blood? This? Uh -huh. Oh, this is a um, artery capillary vein. Okay. It's the blood flow. So blood's coming in, blood's going out. So, um, yeah, that's why I drew these hormones here. They're leaving with the venous blood. Okay. Um, well, you know, let's look at the picture again. We'll come back to that.
So everything makes sense? I think we drew it all. One thing you'll have to do is identify those nuclei. Sometimes, um, I don't know, last time I taught this class, I, that, that was, students were surprised. What did I call that? supra nucleus. I call that one paraventricular, okay? So, well, that's a fair question. They drew two cells, I drew one. Right? Just, uh, anyways, that's the tract of axon. The blood flow, okay? Oxytocin, ADH leaving. So, for the posterior lobe, the axons, because it's all the same tissue, neural tissue, they can extend all the way down. However, for the anterior lobe, you gotta stop short. Because it's like the anterior pituitary is um, epithelial tissue, different tissue type. So the cells, which are neurons that make tropic hormones in this case, they kind of have to stop short. They, they can't get into it. So they, they control the anterior pituitary by secreting regulatory hormones or tropic hormones. And what they'll do is they'll use this portal system of blood vessels to control the anterior pituitary cells. Okay, so appreciate that this is a portal system. It's a vascular connection. It's a shortcut. So let's start to write some of these down. system, it transports these tropic hormones. A portal system transports tropic hormones to and pit. That's how you control it. I said it's a shortcut. Well, to appreciate that, to go from point A to point B, you have to really understand how regular systemic circulation works in terms of uh, the endocrine system. So let me digress a little bit so you can understand why this is a shortcut, because I really do want you to understand that. And if you don't understand regular circulation, you don't really get a sense of what's going on here. In general systemic circulation, the heart pumps blood to arteries. So let me leave a little gap right there. And let's say you're an endocrine cell of an endocrine gland right here. And you're making your hormone, and you got to get it into the bloodstream. You use the capillaries to get your hormone to be absorb into the bloodstream. So again, I'll, I'll draw the capillaries, half red, half blue, symbolize gas exchange. Capillaries are an exchange medium. So then the hormone gets swept up into the venous blood. Turns out veins return blood to the heart. circulation. That would be too complex. The idea I'm trying to get across here, you got to go all the way back to the heart, all the way to the lungs, and then all the way back to the heart again, and then the heart will then pump you out again into the arterial system, to the target. Eventually you got to circulate and get to the target. So that's a little gap here to draw a branch going to some other target. To pretend this cell that I'm going to draw is a target cell of the hormone. It's 
So, go artery, capillary, vein again. Arteries, capillaries, half red, half blue. So that hormone, having gone through all the way back to the heart, pumped out all the way again, goes all the way, all the way to the second capillary bed, and finally gets to its target. Okay, and it can bind its receptor. Right, so um, that's how it normally works, and it works very well. However, this is a shortcut, this portal system. So wouldn't it be better if you could just put a vein right between this cap bed one to cap bed two? It would be better. And that's what it is. Boom, on you right there. Okay, so that's a portal vein. It's a shortcut. So when the target cell receives its hormone straight shot, they have been undiluted by the systemic circulation. So what this portal vein allows is, well, you know, um, portal system bypasses systemic circulation. You don't dilute the tropic hormones. Um, so let's kind of draw that out going back to our drawing. We'll just add to this, okay? And um, I'm going to erase my little diagram here. In a portal system, be able to identify three things. Uh, one, two, three. Cat bed one, portal vein. That's the shortcut. Cat bed two. Cat bed one, cat bed two, basically. And, well, normally it's capillaries, veins, back to the heart. Arteries, capillaries, veins, back to the heart. Here, you don't go back to the heart. You get a straight shot to a second capillary bed through a portal vein. That's the unusual thing. All right, so for us, there are all of these nuclei that secrete many regulatory hormones, and all those nuclei have names, but you're not responsible for them. I've even tried to look them up, and I can't even find them. They're just not typically taught. But anyways, the cell will be around here. A bunch of cells. I'll just draw one for simplicity's sake. Just know that they're going to secrete tropic hormones. That way you can control the anterior pituitary. There's one called thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin RH, you can call it TRH for short. That is synthesized up here by this cell, TRH. And the um, axon will extend down to cap bed one. I'll draw cap bed one right around the infundibulum level.
So imagine TRH is being secreted into the capillary bed of cap bed one, okay? I'll just put a one for cap bed one. And then I'm gonna draw my portal vein, blue, because gas exchange has already occurred in the vein. Straight shot to cap bed two, and I'll just kind of leave it as a big circle. So I'll put PV for portal vein. And I'll just put a number two for cap bed two. There's a bunch of cells in here that I want you to identify, so I don't want to color it in. But the regulatory hormone, TRH, is going straight shot to here. So imagine a cell sensitive to TRH, they're called thyrotropes. See, these are in the anterior pituitary. So the thyrotropes pretend that cell is a thyrotrope. It'll um, receive, be sensitive to, be turned on by the uh, TRH, and in response, it'll release thyroid stimulating hormone. So I'll make a third column for anterior pituitary hormones. So TSH is short for thyroid stimulating hormone. <clears throat> so any questions that I've done so far? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm kind of confused <clears throat> as in like how this, this works out. So yesterday we learned about the different types of glands and right about um, how like this, the, the steps with this. So, does this happen before yesterday's lecture, or does this happen like after? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, so, about like the long distance si signals, and then how um, we go over uh, like ADH, aldosterone, yeah, and, um, and all that. So, do the steps from that get into like the secondary? Those are different topics. Yesterday's lecture, not yesterday, Monday's lecture, I just wanted you to know how hormones work generally. But now what I'm doing is I'm going through all the endocrine glands individually. So like lecture one was like how hormones work. This lecture is pituitary, and I'm just going to go over all the details of pituitary. And then after this gland is going to be adrenal gland, and after that gland is going to be ovary, and then testes, and then thyroid, and then pancreas. So my strategy now is just to go through all the glands individually, now that you know how hormones work. Okay, so this is like the bigger picture and then... This isn't the bigger picture, this is how the pituitary works. Okay. This is the physiology of how the hypothalamus controls the pituitary. The pituitary is the first gland I'm covering. Okay, okay. All right. Good right, question. Any other questions? And the pituitary is, is a tough one to start off with because it has the most things for you to memorize. And this is just kind of like the first regulatory hormone, there's others. Uh, let's see, the next one I have, uh, there's CRH. CRH stands for Corticotropin RH. CRH for short. Now, corticotropin releasing hormone will be released again from here. Right? It uses the portal system. Pretend there's another cell that makes CRH, um, and it uses the portal system to stimulate cells here. So let me draw another cell. Maybe that cell uh, will be the corticotrope. Corticotroph will respond to the CRH and it'll release ACTH. Okay, let me draw a line here and it looks like stuff gets mixed up. So this is another hormone. 
ACTH. ACTH stands for adrenal corticotropic hormone. So do you see how it's the same thing, just a different regulatory hormone? There's a lot of secretions from the anterior pituitary. Okay, that's, I'm not done yet. Uh, okay, gonadotropin releasing hormone. GNRH. GNRH. Now, GNRH stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. So I'll just put gonadotropin RH for short. But they're going to stimulate cells called gonadotropes. Yeah? So can these hormones go into... Um, other cells or no? Uh, no. Um, they can be around other cells, but they won't stimulate them. Because um, remember, hormones have specificity. So only cells that present a receptor for GNRH will respond. They could, they could go wherever they want, but they're not going to do anything. Okay. Yeah, so the cells are um, sensitive to GNRH are right here in the anterior pituitary. Okay. And when stimulated, the gonadotropes will release your gonadotropins. FSH, LH, it's a two for, two for one. Uh, they are considered your gonadotropins. Quote, unquote. So, so far, what we got, just pause for a second. We got three regulatory hormones. They're transported through the portal system to the anterior pituitary, where you have cells that will secrete those hormones on the far right side of the board. So imagine another vein coming off cat bed two. Oops. Pens are going all over the place. And being released from the anterior pituitary are TSH, right, thyroid stimulating hormone, ACTH, and FSHLH. Now we're not done yet. There's a couple more. There's prolactin. Okay, um, let me start at the top again. Let me uh, clear this out. Okay, there's the hormones called PRH and PIH. Prolactin releasing hormone, prolactin inhibiting hormone. Now, they've identified prolactin inhibiting hormone as being the molecule dopamine. You might read that. Both of these control the release of prolactin through these cells called lactotropes. So I guess I better add another cell to my picture. And I don't know if you're keeping track, but I'm trying to get you to make connections here. These cells are in the anterior pituitary. And if it's PRH, which is the stimulatory one, they both come from the regulatory, um, excuse me, the neurons synthesizing the regulatory hormones of the hypothalamus. 
So I'll add PRH, PIH to the list up here. Again, they use the portal system, and if it's PRH, it'll stimulate the release of prolactin, PRL. This is the abbreviation for prolactin, PRL. Prolactin, I'll tell you what it targets uh, later. <coughs> Basically, it's milk production in the mammary gland. And there's another set of hormones that will control the release of growth hormone. That's a biggie. Growth hormone is very important for the development of lean mass in young people. There's GH, IH, GH, RH. I won't write it out. I think it's easy to remember. GH is growth hormone. So the stimulatory one, let's talk about that. The inhibitory one, well, it inhibits the release. The stimulatory one will stimulate the release of GH from somatotrophs. <clears throat> I'll draw another cell here. And growth hormone is the largest secretion from the anterior pituitary. So I'll put a GH down here. And I'll put a GH over here to complete my table. Growth hormone. Okay, and again, to complete my picture up here, I'm going to add GHIH, GHRH. So all of those, well, okay, let me put it this way. The, um, I would say the biggest mistake uh, that students make, and it's understandable why you do it, it's like an alphabet soup up here. These get confused with those. Right, so try to keep those straight in your head. These are the regulatory hormones, the tropic hormones, that will control the release of these hormones. These hormones may be tropic or not. Okay, and I'll have to go through these now and what they target. This is just trying to present the uh, control that the hypothalamus has over the pituitary. So, but I'm finished with that. But there, are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Um, so. I thought only anterior has um, tropic hormones. Nope. Hypothalamus does too. Um, and are, so are you saying there's not tropic hormones? Yes. That is correct. There's not tropic hormones. Okay. Prolactin is not tropic. It targets the breast tissue. It does its direct action. Growth hormone is thought of as direct action. It can directly cause um, breakdown of fuel sources. Is there only a certain amount of tropic hormones that um, a certain amount? The the anterior so like for the an, I thought the anterior doesn't have any tropic hormones. I mean sorry, it does. It only has tropic hormones, right? Um, most of them are. But then so <coughs> the PRL and the GH, they're not tropic hormones. They're, they're called direct action. They don't control the release of other hormones. So okay. they're not tropic. So all the ones we talked about yesterday as an example, yeah. all of those were tropic. Because I was teaching you the concept that hormones can release other hormones. And do those hormones go by the three um, stimulations that we went over, humoral, neural, and hormonal? All of the ones I talked about here today, all of them are the example of hormonal. Because they're all controlled by the release of this. Okay, so they're all hormonal as a mechanism. All right? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, question. So from my understanding of this, the top hormones are regulatory hormones yeah. that get released from cat bed one that stimulate the no, they release. Get they get released into cat bed one. In cat bed one. Yeah. And then those stimulate those hormones down at the bottom in cat bed two. They stimulate the release of the hormones okay. from cat bed two. Okay. That is correct. Um, there, these two are tropic. Tropic, tropic, these are also tropic. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over all of these. We'll talk about them one at a time. So it's very clear what's tropic and what is. So now let's look at the professional picture. 
the reason why I draw it out is there's this um, thought in education that when you draw it out, you understand it better. And if the answer is for you now, no, I didn't learn better, draw it again. And then keep drawing it until you get it. Okay? You're not expected to understand it from the get-go, but eventually we want you to come to that full understanding. So everything on this picture should make sense. We talked about it all. Let's review. What color did I draw the cell when I drew it? Purple. This is the purple one, right? And uh, okay, so for example, I said the tropic hormones. Uh, I don't list them here, but remember, it's all the ones on this side of the board. They are transported by the portal system. Cat bed one, portal veins, cat bed two. And look at all these hormones that are released from cells in there. Okay? <coughs> so this vein, uh, we don't name it. This is the important one. It connects two capillary beds. It's considered a shortcut. All right? So would you label that as primarily um, cat bed one when we get tested? Or is it yeah, cat uh, this is the book's terminology. Okay. You could use cat bed one or this one. Cat bed one or primary capillary plexus, cat bed two or secondary capillary plexus, same thing. Thank you. You know, before I um, go through these, the slides that look like this, I have some slides at the end that I think are good to answer now. <coughs> So if you have a printout, we just did this. Process. Talk it over with your neighbor if you have to. I'm going to have to go. You don't have to call it that. Maybe call it anterior pituitary just so I know. Anterior pituitary ABC. Answer on. On your half sheet. Oh, it's not going to get uploaded until later in the day. 
because I have to use my phone for everything. So I can't upload that report at the same time. <coughs> All right, let's see if you're uh, tracking this. The three parts of the portal system are cap head one, portal vein, cap head two. That's pretty straightforward. Now, what about B? You can use the acronyms. Um, I was going for the ones that are secreted from up here, right? They use the portal system. That'll be uh, the CRH, the TRH, uh, those ones, okay? GHIH, GHRH. The ones that you wrote on this side of the board, okay? They use the portal system, and then they're released from here. And uh, yeah, that's a common mistake on the test. It's trying to kind of get that straightened out. C is a one-word answer. How would you describe it? Vascular or neural? Vascular. It's definitely vascular. It's a vein, right? Portal vein. It goes from the cap bed one to the cap bed two. Let's have the same conversation. And here's a different picture of posterior pituitary. So right on your half sheet, well, let's do it together. Let's get the half sheet for now. A, B, C. If I'm going for A here, based on what I taught, I think pituitary stock or infundibulum would be good. B is that big long term I wrote, a tract of axons, hypothalamic, hypophyseal tract that should be in your notes. And then C is just pointing to the posterior pituitary. <coughs> I only listed two hormones that are synthesized by these two nuclei. Supraoptic, paraventricular, that would be the ADH and the oxytocin. Those are the only two that are released. And I described it as a neural connection. So kind of the same questions except for the other part. All right, so I'm going to go back to where I was. This is where we left off. And the next slide is this. So I just want to go through each hormone from the pituitary and make sure that we've covered all our bases. when it targets the kidney cell is to increase water reabsorption. And what I'd emphasize in lecture yesterday, you increase blood volume, increase blood pressure. Now the reason why I taught it yesterday, I keep saying yesterday, the reason why I taught it in the last class is because I wanted to show you an example of a protein hormone. <coughs> okay, because what we had learned is protein hormones act through G proteins. So that's why this, all this was uh, mentioned previously. But today I just want to give you a sense of uh, what it does generally. <coughs> so, if dehydration is a stimulus for its release, if you're adequately hydrated, you don't need it. Okay, so you'll increase your urine output. Um, moving on. The other secretion from the posterior pituitary is oxytocin. Now, I didn't talk about the physiology of this yesterday, so let me uh, do that now.
So oxytocin, it targets smooth muscle in female reproductive structures. Smooth muscle. Oh, female repro structures. The slide indicates oxytocin, it'll target the smooth <coughs> muscle of lactiferous ducts. Uh, question? Uh, so, would it be considered a positive feedback? Oh, um, Mm, no, those are um, what I have there. Are okay. Let me go go through those. Then the positive sign indicates just the stimulus for its release. Okay. But would oxytocin be released also during childbirth? Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, just duh. Let me get to that. When it targets the smooth muscle of the lactiferous ducts, the cells will contract in a way that open up the duct to allow milk out. So we call that milk letdown. Right into baby's mouth. So the stimulus for that would be the suckling of the infant, okay, which is on the slide. So. Suckling infant on a nursing mother. Okay, that's a stimulus for its release. Plus sign means stimulates. Well, the other thing is it targets the smooth muscle of the uterus. So that would be the myometrium. <clears throat> now the. the Uterus, think of it as an upside down pair. And baby's inside there, it's pushing against the wall, ready to come out. And you stretch that uterine wall. As baby gets bigger, it stretches it out. And baby's kicking, it stretches it out. And, well, anyways, the uterine stretching, that's a stimulus. Okay. So the uterine stretching is a stimulus, as well as the neck of the uterus is called the cervix. So when that dilates, when it opens up, there's a small hole in there that gets progressively bigger and bigger, and it's supposed to dilate to about 10 centimeters. That'll be enough, big enough for baby's <coughs> head to get through. That's also a stimulus for the release of oxytocin. So the stretching and cervical dilation. are all stimuli. But another stimulus for its release is um, sex arousal. Sometimes books have called this the intimacy hormone for that reason. I always jokingly say, if you have sex with your pregnant wife, you're risking a squirt in the face. Right, because, well think about it. <laughs> All right, well anyways, I wanna move on from um, oxytocin. So that's basically what you need to know for that. It targets female repro um, smooth muscle. Uh, question? Uh, yes, I know sometimes if the mother isn't dilating enough, mm -hmm. they will give the mother Pitocin. Is that a synthetic form of oxytocin? Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay, so that So when they say induced labor, they're just kind of giving them more of this kind of molecule that will stimulate, further stimulate the contraction. Does that mean that the mother is not producing enough oxytocin on her own? Could be. To, okay. And um, you can read some research on this, but if you get an epi, mm -hmm. that increases the chances you'll have to go C-section. Um, I'm not sure if there's a direct cause on oxytocin, but I don't know. Something to think about. I have heard of pertussis, yeah. that's supposed to, I don't know the molecular structure of it, but I assume it's similar to oxytocin. So yeah, it's supposed to help, I guess, increase dilation yeah. and increase labor. Yeah, it's so the same, yeah, the same function. Not producing enough. Exactly, that's how you can think of it. 
All right, so for uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone, when that <coughs> releases TSH, um, you're going to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. So TSH is the secretion from the anterior pituitary. So what I'm writing is, it stimulates thyroid gland to release or secrete TH, thyroid hormone. So there is some negative feedback here. Thyroid hormone, well, I actually talked a lot about that in the last lecture on Friday. But for now, I'll just say it boosts metabolism. Okay. And when you get enough thyroid <coughs> hormone circulating, that will negatively feed back and turn off the top. Okay. Elevated levels, turn off TRH, and in turn you turn off the TSH. Uh, then I talked about growth hormone, and that's kind of wide acting, and uh, the effects are categorized here. Let's first review what I talked about prior. <coughs> GHRH, GHIH, the GHRH, when it stimulates the somatotropes to release growth hormone, it can either act, it can either do its job indirectly by stimulating the liver to secrete insulin-like growth factors, or it can directly act on your um, energy stores for fat and glycogen breakdown. So they categorize these effects as anabolic and anti-insulin. So those are the effects I want you to know. Think of growth hormone as the hormone of your youth. It burns <coughs> fat and it builds muscle. Growth hormone. So again, let's categorize the effects as anabolic effects. Anabolic in physiology means tissue building. So, okay, through the release of IGFs, let's be complete. Growth hormone stimulates liver. IGFs, insulin-like growth factors, and th they will do the tissue building things. They'll, like I say on this slide, the IGFs will increase muscle, increase bone cartilage growth, tissue building, anabolic effects. Okay. And the reason why these molecules are called insulin-like growth factors, they do things like insulin would. Insulin is your major anabolic hormone. Uh, think of um, a large meal consumed. You go to bed, it's an it's insulin trigger. Insulin will be released, it'll help store all the energy and calories from the food you ate throughout the day. Okay, so this is similar to that. These growth factors, they're also tissue building, all right? However, growth hormone can also do <coughs> anti-insulin things. It'll break things down. So what I say on the slide there is fat and glycogen breakdown. When you break down fat, you break down TGs. Well, triglycerides.
Think of triglycerides. Always, it sometimes is illustrated like a capital letter E. It has this glycerol backbone, and each leg, each of the three legs of the E, is a fatty acid, a hydrocarbon chain, and that's really the molecule that can get into your bloodstream, and your body can burn for fuel. Okay. Fat is a fuel source. So imagine, break it off, break it off, break it off. That process is called lipolysis. You're breaking down your fat so you can metabolize it. And so that's why I say over here, increase FFAs. You're going to increase the circulating levels of the free fatty acids. Increase circulating. Free fatty acids. <clears throat> the other thing is you're going to break down glycogen. Now, when you break down the glycogen, you're going to increase the circulating glucose levels. Glucose is the fuel that can get into your bloodstream and your muscles can burn. Increase circulating blood glucose. The way I think of it is um, you need energy to build your muscle mass. Okay, it doesn't happen in a vacuum, so they kind of both happen at the same time. You burn your fat and you increase your blood sugar, you'll have fuel to build muscle mass, increase bone and cartilage growth. Okay. So growth hormone secretion, it kind of declines with age, and it's harder to keep the fat up as you get older. Uh, it increases with increased exercise. So if you, as you get older, if you exercise more, you'll keep your growth, ho growth hormone levels up. That's why it's a, always abused by athletes. It does this great thing, this great lean mass effect on the body. It's illegal, it's a problem with uh, elite track athletes. Track athletes who abuse growth hormone, they're like an adult, right? But they have braces because the growth hormone makes their jaw get too big. That's kind of a, a sign. Oh, why do you have braces? Probably using growth hormone. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about now PRL, prolactin. Prolactin, when it targets the mammary glands, we're going to talk about only for the female. For males, there's no breast development, not really a player, okay? No significance in the males. But for females, let's consider if the female is pregnant or not, okay? Because the hormone levels are different. So. Um, let's say you're not pregnant, but it's, it's your normal 28-day menstrual cycle. Okay. Your normal cycle. In that 28-day cycle, basically half of that cycle, estrogen's a little bit lower. In the other half, it's a little bit higher. Okay. If estrogen's a little bit higher, you have an increased amount of estrogen, what that will do is that will stimulate the release of some prolactin um, by stimulating PRH, which will then release plus sign, plus means stimulus in my lecture. Uh, estrogen will give you PRH, which will give you a prolactin, which will stimulate the mammary gland, but not enough for full-on lactation and milk production, but maybe um, you'll notice some breast tenderness or swelling. Increased sensitivity in that region. When you are pregnant, the estrogen levels from the placenta are, are very high. So I'll just kind of symbolize that by putting couple of up arrows for estrogen, 
and you just kind of have that effect of getting more prolactin releasing hormone, which will give you more prolactin to get full on lactation milk production from the mammary glands. You know, we're all mammals, we feed our young with milk from the mammary glands. Um, Oh yes, okay. So again, man, not talking about it, is uh, very low estrogen is no effect. Now, um, this is kind of where I stopped. Um, I didn't do one of these slides for ACTH or for FSH, LH, but I think I've given you enough tools to where, if I wanted you to make a slide like, like this one, I think you could do it. Yeah, and I, I think that's something um, you can practice at home if you're wanting to do it. And the idea is I've gone through all these, and every time I've talked about it, I, I, I've said if it's trophic or direct action, that would be good to know. Um, if it's a negative feedback, you know, you can look that up, and I give you some reference pages to look up. But I think you should be able to understand how ACTH and FSHLH, how they operate. All right, that concludes the pituitary. Um, I'd like to take a break now. That's okay. Come back in, well, let's say 12 30. And we'll continue on with the adrenal one.